Neon tetra is a freshwater fish of the tetra fish family. Neon tetras have vibrant blue bodies with striking red markings from the belly to the tail. Because of their hardiness, neon tetras have low care needs, making the fish a popular choice for beginner fishkeepers. There are several variations of neon tetras available, including black neon tetras and diamond head neon tetras. Luckily, it's not so hard. And in this video, I'll walk you through how you can provide the optimal care for neon tetras. Neon tetras are found in the northern and western Amazon basins in Peru, Brazil, and Colombia. The waters in this region are acidic, with a pH as low as 0.4. Neon tetras live in blackwater and clearwater streams. The neon tetras natural habitat is declining due to deforestation and farming, but there are still a lot of neon tetras in the wild. More than 1.5 million neon tetras are imported from fish farms to the US every month. Neon tetras are one of the smallest species of aquarium fish, and adult neon tetras only grow to 1.5 inches long. Males and female neon tetras are the same sizes, but males have longer dorsal and anal fins than females. Male and female neon tetras have the same lifespan of up to 8 years. In the wild, the fish can live for up to 10 years, depending on the population of predators in their habitat. Neon tetras are widely available in the United States. You can buy neon tetras from local pet stores and online. The average cost of a neon tetra is $3 to $5. Neon tetras should be kept in groups of at least six, bringing up the average total cost to $18 to $30. Neon tetras are vivid blue with a thick red line from the belly to the tail. Neon tetras are calm, peaceful fish and are rarely aggressive in a peaceful community tank setup. Neon tetras have bright blue heads and backs, with a deep blue stripe from the eye to the tail and an iridescent red stripe on each side of their bodies. The body of a neon tetra is narrow and torpedo-shaped, and the fish's fins and tail are compact, translucent, and pointed. Breeders have introduced different types of neon tetras, which can only be found in captivity. Types of neon tetras include, longfin neon tetras, albino neon tetras, diamond head neon tetras, golden neon tetras, black neon tetras. Male neon tetras are typically brighter in color than females. Males also have flatter bellies than females and straight blue stripes, while females have blue stripes that curve upward because of the female's rounded body shape. When stressed, a neon tetra loses some of its bright coloring and appears faded. Neon tetras turn a dull violet blue in the dark, and a brilliant blue-green when exposed to light. Baby neon tetras are paler than adult neon tetras, and it takes several weeks for the fry to become bold blue in color. Neon tetras are non-aggressive schooling fish that get along with other peaceful fish of a similar size. If stressed or uncomfortable, neon tetras show signs of aggression including fin nipping. Neon tetras are active fish with high energy requirements. They are most active during the day, and they spend most of their time darting around the tank. These fish swim in the middle of the water column and enjoy playing and hiding in underwater vegetation. The more comfortable a neon tetra feels in its environment, the less frequently the fish will hide. Caring for neon tetras is easy. Neon tetras are hardy fish that can adapt to brackish and clearwater environments, but a clean freshwater tank setup will ensure that the fish thrive in captivity. Neon tetras are omnivores and have a varied diet in the wild which you should replicate in your home aquarium. In the wild, neon tetras live in tropical flowing waters, with dense vegetation that includes floating plants and roots. You should replicate this habitat in the tank by providing low-light hiding places for your neon tetra. Decorate your neon tetra tank with floating plants like hornwort and java moss. These plants create shady, secluded hideaways that neon tetras enjoy. Driftwood can also be used to provide hiding places for the fish. Neon tetras don't spend much time digging in the substrate, so the choice of substrate isn't as important to neon tetras as it is for bottom-dwelling fish. However, a dark substrate such as black sand will make your neon tetra feel at home and will showcase the fish's beautiful neon coloring. Darkening three sides of the aquarium's glass helps to mimic the neon tetra's low-light, wild habitat. 
Although Neon Tetras adapt well to tank environments, you shouldn't add Neon Tetras to a startup tank because the fish don't tolerate changes to the water chemistry. Add Neon Tetras to a fully mature tank to ensure the fish thrive in their environment. In poor tank conditions or stressful environments, Neon Tetras are prone to several common aquarium diseases. Neon Tetra disease is so called because the disease was first identified in Neon Tetras. Caused by a microsporidian parasite, Neon Tetra disease causes restlessness, loss of coloration, cysts, difficulty swimming, and, in advanced cases, a curved spine. The parasite that causes Neon Tetra disease spreads when fish eat infected live foods. There is no known cure for Neon Tetra disease, so you should remove all affected fish from the tank to prevent the disease from spreading to the entire tank population. Ick, otherwise called Ick or White Spot Disease, is a parasitic disease caused by the protozoan Ichthyophthyreus multifilis. Fish with ick have white, salt-like spots on their bodies, tails, and fins, and rub their bodies against rough surfaces to relieve the itching. To treat ick, quarantine the affected fish in a separate tank. Add 1 tablespoon of salt per 5 gallons of water to the tank and increase the water temperature by 2 degrees. Neon tetras housed in poor water conditions are at risk of developing fin rot and tail rot. This disease begins at the ends of the fins or tail and gradually works its way towards the fish's body, causing the fins to become ragged and frayed. Treat fin rot by carrying out a complete water change and using antibiotics if recommended by your veterinarian. Neon tetras are peaceful and passive, making them suitable tank mates for a variety of fish species. Similarly sized, bottom-dwelling, non-aggressive fish can be added to a community tank with neon tetras. Great tank mates for neon tetras include, barbs, small catfish, small, peaceful goramas, Dawes cichlids, other tetra species. Non-fish tank mates for neon tetras include, mystery snails, shrimp, crabs, neon tetras are a schooling species, so make sure your neon tetras are housed in groups of six or more before considering other fish species for the tank. In the wild, neon tetras are omnivores, eating a varied diet of meat and fish. Depending on the food source available in the fish's habitat, a neon tetra will feed on insect larvae, small insects, algae, and other plant matter. You should replicate the neon tetras diet by providing a similarly varied selection of animal and plant-based foods in the tank. Good quality fish flakes that are fortified with vitamins and minerals are a staple food to feed neon tetras. Several times per week, Feed neon tetras live or frozen foods like bloodworms, daphnia, tubifex, and brine shrimp. Cut live food into small pieces to prevent the neon tetras from having problems swallowing the food. Make sure your neon tetras get enough plant foods in their diet. Feed the fish algae wafers, grapes, cucumbers, and strawberries up to three times per week. From six months old, neon tetras should be fed twice a day. Provide enough food for the tetras to eat for two minutes, then discard the uneaten food to maintain good water quality. Overfeeding neon tetras can make the fish sick, so stick to a feeding schedule and don't put too much food into the tank. Neon tetras can be challenging to breed, due to their need for very specific water conditions. If you wish to attempt to breed them, set up a separate breeding tank. Water hardness in the breeding tank should be only 1 to 2 dgh, and pH 5.0 to 6.0. Use a sponge filter for filtration and provide live plants. Spawning fish will often jump, so make sure the tank has a cover. Cover the sides of the tank with dark paper to reduce light in the tank. Water temperature should be kept between 72 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Condition the breeding pair with live foods prior to placement in the breeding tank. When introducing the breeding pair to the tank, begin with no lighting at all. The next day, increase the lighting and continue to do so gradually to induce spawning. Spawning will generally occur in the morning. The male will embrace the female during spawning, which will then release more than 100 eggs. The eggs are transparent and slightly adhesive and will stick to the plants. Remove the breeding pair as soon as the eggs are laid, as the parents will quickly eat the eggs. Maintain low lighting as both the eggs and the fry are sensitive to light. The eggs will hatch in approximately 24 hours, producing tiny fry that will feed off their egg sac for the next few days. 
Hatch rates are not high, so do not expect more than one-third of the eggs to result in viable fry. In three to four days the fry will become free-swimming and must be fed very small foods, such as infusoria, rotifers, egg yolk, or commercially prepared fry food. In a few weeks, they will be large enough to be fed freshly hatched brine shrimp. The fry will display adult coloration roughly after the first month. Neon tetras are peaceful, hardy fish that are suitable for beginners and experienced aquarists. You should get a neon tetra for your aquarium if you have a freshwater tank with enough room for a school of at least six fish. If your tank houses large or aggressive fish, either don't get a neon tetra or establish a separate tank to house these tetras. As long as neon tetras are kept in peaceful community tanks with the right water conditions, the fish will thrive in a home aquarium.